Welcome. Today, uh, in this lecture, we shall be learning about the some more measurements. Uh, we have already covered the measurement of flow and pressure, etc. Now, we shall look into the temperature measurement and the quality measurement. So, let us go to it. Let us see that what we shall learn in this lecture. We shall talk about some temperature measure, measurement devices in case of natural gas and some kind of quality measurement uh, methods. Understand this that uh, there are many ways of measurement of these uh, parameters, but we shall be restricting ourselves only to those which are commonly used in the natural gas industries. So, first let us understand the principle of thermometry that is the measurement of temperature. Thermo means uh, energy or temperature, thermal energy and metry means measurement. So, this measurement principle is based on the zeroth law of thermodynamics which says that if two systems A and B are independently in thermal equilibrium with a third system C, then these A and B are also in thermal equilibrium with themselves. So, this is the principle of the uh, zeroth law of thermodynamics and pictorially we can show that suppose this system A and system B, these two systems are in thermal equilibrium with a system C. So, then what happens we say that A, the thermal equilibrium means that A and C have the same temperature, B and C have the same temperature. So, it also means A and B are also in thermal equilibrium that is the temperature of A and B are also the same. Uh, now, what is the speciality about this? It seems to be obvious, but you see that if you look at our day to day life, the way we measure temperature, for example, when we have fever, we use thermometer. Now, in this case, how to identify the thermometer? Now, thermometer is one system, my body is another system and there may be another thing which with which which I will say that my body is how hot or how cold my body is. So, what I do that if I take a some standard, ok. So, what I will first do I will take a thermometer that suppose suppose that is system A and suppose I am the system C with which the thermometer will come to equilibrium if I keep thermometer for some time with in touch with my body. And now what I do I take some known uh, system whose temperature I know. Now, if I adjust that temperature of the system same as my body temperature and it comes to equilibrium with my body, then what happens? I say that the thermometer and the system with, with which I measured my body temperature, they will mutually be in thermal equilibrium and this particular thing is used for the calibration of these temperature sensors. As you know, which will, I will not be talking about the calibration part, but as we know that there are many fixed points. Um, using which we calibrate all the thermometers or the temperature sensors. So, this calibrated sensors, calibrated ones are the ones which are the system B, okay, my thermometer is system A and my body is system C. So, in that way we find that we develop this whole concept of measurement of the temperature. So, let us see the commonly used uh, temperature measurement devices, uh, these are thermocouple, then resistive temperature detector and thermistor. So, I at the end of the lecture, I will also show you a thermocouple and resistive uh, temperature detector. This, now oh, as I told you, all these sensors need to be calibrated with some fixed points and there are many, many fixed points given in the literature and some of the common ones you know that steam point and the ice point that is the temperature at which water uh, boils at one atmosphere and the temperature at which water condenses to ice at uh, sorry freezes to ice at one atmosphere. So, let us see the thermocouples. Now, these thermocouples based our work on the um, on the Seebeck effect and this we know that it is an effect which causes a change in the EMF between two materials with a if there is a difference in the temperature in the materials. Now, these two materials are joined at some point and we apply two different temperatures to these two limbs of this uh, material and then we find there is some kind of a EMF generated and we 
measure the emf to find out the temperature so here we have seen that here in this particular figure we see there is one hot junction and this cold junction okay so these are two materials this is top one is one material and other one is the bottom material and here we are showing that uh, we are heating it up with some kind of heat source and another one we are keeping cooled that we call reference junction and this is a measuring junction and then due to this difference in the temperature there is some kind of emf generated which is measured by the voltmeter so this voltmeter reading becomes an indication of the temperature provided we calibrate it with some standard temperature so this reference temperature may be an ice bath and here we show that how it looks like in practice here we this is the one which you obtain generally from the market and particular this particular rim how it looks from inside that in the inside here we have a sheath that is a covering and then we have two metals a and b these metals need not be pure metals they may be alloys too um, so these we have this two metal thing and this is an insulator and they are uh, uh, producing some kind of um, some uh, voltage when we put these two metals these two ends of the metals at two different temperatures now here we have compared the uh, performance of a few types of uh, thermocouples like we have different types of thermocouples depending on the material chosen to make this so there is type p type k type t many other things so here we see that the kind of materials we are using here we are using in type p nickel chromium alloy and copper nickel alloy in type k we are using nickel chromium nickel aluminum in type t we are using copper and copper nickel alloy and we also find that all these thermocouples are operating can uh, are operate at various temperature ranges so depending on the choice of the material we have the temperature ranges and here i show in this particular figure that how the emf varies with the temperature for different types of thermocouples here we see that the slope of the variation of this emf with temperature decides the sensitivity of the thermocouple that means we want a therm measuring device to be sensitive enough that means it should be able to sense any change effectively for some small changes in the temperature so if it is highly sensitive that means even a small change will be detected very efficiently by that thermocouple in that respect we find that this uh, gold platinum or platinum palladium thermocouples are less sensitive than the other types of thermocouples but sensitive sensitivity is one of the parameters to uh, decide the choice of therm uh, thermocouples there are other parameters also which are used for the choice now there are various expressions uh, to correlate the emf with the temperature so here are some polynomial function in which we find that first uh, expression shows how the emf depends on the temperature and the second shows how the temperature depends on the emf these have been obtained empirically from some experimental data so if you know curve fitting or regression you can find such kind of um, expressions so this uh, all these a b a b coefficients they can be obtained from some standard table and here here we show uh, the coefficient values a and b uh, for some a uh, few type of thermocouples like copper constantan that is type t chromium aluminum that is type k and chromium um, uh, gold and um, iron this is uh, another thermocouple for which we show the values of a and b to be used in this particular expressions now uh, what are the applicability so we have some advantages like uh, a thermocouple provides stable response it should be stable it should not be very unsteady it should quickly come to the particular temperature and capable of measuring a wide range of temperatures and may be grounded and brought into contact with the material being measured it is less expensive and can be easily installed but disadvantages are that it is when we want to measure two temperature it becomes not that effective and it generates some kind of errors 
but by and large you will find that this is very very commonly used in for research also. Then we have resistive temperature detector that is the RTD in short. The working principle is this the resistance of a material changes with the temperature. Now, we generally find that the resistance will change for any kind of material with temperature. However, all the materials are not suitable candidates to make RTDs because we also have to see that the sensitivity should be enough that means resistance change versus temperature should be constant and interchangeable and the temperature coefficient should be very large that means uh, it should not be it should respond quickly to any kind of temperature changes and the construction of rtd is that it has a measuring element the resistance thermometer element whose resistance will change with temperature then we have some connecting wires and we protect this particular um, resistance by some kind of some sheath some kind of protection pro protective layer is used to protect this particular element and platinum is very commonly used rtd uh, we call it in short pt pt uh, rtd the platinum rtd and it is used very common because its resistance changes almost linearly uh, with temperature and as we can see in this particular uh, diagram that the resistance of the platinum RTD is changing almost linearly with temperature. It is quite stable and it can handle a wide range of temperatures and is suitable uh, for uh, measuring the um, resistance effectively. And this comes in two varieties that one can be thin film and one can be wire wound that in thin film we I will show you at the end of the lecture uh, this that it is a very very thin uh, film is used here to protect the element and there we have the wire leads attached to it and uh, this kind of things is used when we want to measure some point temperature in some uh, devices at a given point we want to measure temperature and this wire wound is used when we are not able to put this thin film type inside some system it you will find it when in practice in some uh, some cases we are not able to put this fix this one so what we do then we take this particular thing inside a long limb and this limb can be inserted in the system and then we can take out the lead wire from the end to uh, measure the temperature so depending on the uh, system <coughs> we choose one of these two configurations and here we have some lead wire configuration 2 wire 3 wire 4 wire I will not go into detail of these things just to tell you that there are some resistances also involved at the junction. So, to nullify the effect of the resistance at the junction we use more than 2 wires also and um, depending on system to system uh, we go for to 2 wire that is simplest in construction to the 4 wire which is very very accurate. So, we have different types of configurations of the lead wire and now we go for calibration in the calibration again we shall see that we are calibrating basically the resistance uh, with the temperature and in case of uh, the uh, um, thermocouples we were calibrating with respect to the EMF, EMF and temperature here it is resistance to temperature and this expression is very common and this is the calendar van Dusen equation. And this is for the platinum RTD, this A, B, C values are given here and the R0 is the resistance at 0 degree centigrade and here we find that how the calibration curve looks for the resistance on the y axis and temperature on the x axis and we find that for most part of this of our interest we find that it is linear. This is coming from a very low temperature up to about say uh, 70 K and going to 300 K almost near room temperature. So, it is a for a very long range for a very low temperature also this uh, um, uh, RTD can work very well. Advantages of RTD are that it uh, can traverse a wide range of temperatures. This temperature range is not very peculiar it is typical temperature range in it um, uh, then we, minus 200 means we are going in the cryogenic uh, regime and it has a very good 
uh, accuracy, very good interchangeability and it has a long term stability. Disadvantages are that it is rarely used for a very high temperature generally above 650 degree centigrade because it becomes contaminated by some impurities and it has a uh, commendable and very good uh, response uh, due to a bulb size. And but the response starts decreasing uh, if with the bulb size. Now, the two standards uh, are there for the RTDs one is the European standard, one is the American standard and this European standard is used in uh, more frequently and it requires that the RTD to have an electric resistance of 100 ohm at 0 degree centigrade and this is generally satisfied by a very commonly used uh, RTD that is the platinum RTD. We sometimes we call it PT100. PT100 means that this particular RTD can will be showing 100 ohm resistance at 0 degree centigrade, but please understand this PT100 is not unique there can be other PTs also. And the temperature coefficient is about this that means the um, how much will be the resistance, um, how much is change in resistance per unit change in the uh, temperature. Next we have uh, this comparison between the platinum RTD and thermocouple, we find that the sensitivity wise uh, PT RTD gives a better sensitivity than the thermocouples, stability wise we get higher stability than the thermocouples, in accuracy wise we get higher um, accuracy than thermocouples and for maximum temperature we find that thermocouple can go to higher temperature than the uh, RTD. Now, lastly we shall be talking of thermistor. Now, thermistor in principle is similar to RTD only change is that here in the thermistor uh, we use some ceramic or polymeric material unlike RTD which uh, is based on metallic material and it also uh, gives very high precision and it works uh, uh, very well, but only thing is this the span of temperature within which it works is lower than the RTDs that restricts its use and the resistance also drops non-linearly with temperature rise which is not the case with RTD and we always try to have uh, the device which will be as linear in its response as possible. So, that way RTD seems to be the best of the lot because it gives almost a linear variation of the resistance with temperature. So, in that case what happens that in, by in the calibration we can choose only two points to calibrate the particular sensor, but if it is non-linear then we need more standards to make the calibration curve. And this is how a typical thermistor looks like. The temperature range is about from minus 100 to 300 degree centigrade with an accuracy of quite good accuracy 0 0.001 percent. The accuracy is quite good. And then we have some classification of these um, uh, thermistors, uh, some of negative temperature coefficient and positive temperature coefficient. It simply uh, tells us that whether the resistance will decrease or increase with an increase in temperature. Negative means the slope is negative that is with increase in the temperature resistance will decrease whereas, positive means that with increase in temperature the resistance will increase. And advantages are that it has high resistivity can respond quickly to some temperature change. Disadvantages are that it may be maybe the calibration gets destroyed at high temperature and its application is limited by the temperature range and it is very fragile so that it will break easily. So, we have to take more care while we handle this kind of uh, uh, these thermistors. Next we come to quality measurement. Now, quality measurement is needed for various reasons that whenever we are supplying the uh, natural gas, we have to see that whether the natural gas is in only vapor form or in liquid form or a mixture of that and it is needed for safe and efficient transportation of gas through some transmission systems uh, to operate a 
particular gas specification. Then to certify that the gas appliances receive the gas at some given configuration and so that the um, they can be handled safely and the consumers uh, should get the right quality of the gas for which they are paying and to ensure that the gas is injected into natural gas grid with the, and the quality matches with the uh, specified quality that should go in the grid for transportation of the natural gas. So, this quality is basically the uh, amount of vapor and amount of liquid present in the natural gas. So, first we see that uh, what is vapor quality, how we find the vapor quality. Now, vapor quality uh, for this we need the uh, um, information about the density of the flowing fluid. For single cell flow we know that we can calculate the density uh, by knowing the pressure temperature uh, from some equation of state as we learnt earlier. But for two phase flow uh, we can know the density by knowing the quality and this is the expression to know the density of the uh, two phase mixture with respect to the quality. Here x is the vapor fraction that is the amount of vapor present per unit amount of the mixture and x is the uh, 1 minus x is therefore the liquid fraction. So, here we are doing the 1 minus x by liquid density and vapor fraction divided by the vapor density and this is how we are able to correlate the density with the vapor fraction. Similarly, we have liquid quality measurement in this it is obtained from the volumetric or mass flow rate of the liquid and volumetric flow rate is given in this way that some parameter c into the delta h, delta h is the manometric height for the pressure drop. And here uh, we find this c is again given in terms of some kind of other parameters and these parameters uh, uh, we know these parameters from our knowledge of the orifice meter flow rate uh, in the earlier lecture. And in terms of mass flow rate we get this kind of an expression. Now, in this expression the S is a value de determined from the bore of orifice and internal diameter of the metering tube and N is a combined constant for weight flow measurement and D is the inner diameter of the tube and F A are some kind of factors, F A mm they are some kind of uh, correction factors about which we learnt in earlier in the flow measurement for the orifices and that is why I am not going to explain these terms to you and we also learnt how to get these values. There are some tables given uh, to find out some of these uh, correction factors. Those tables have been presented in the uh, measurement of uh, flow through orifice and gamma f is the specific gravity of the liquid streams. Now, here we have simpler way of finding the uh, uh, mass flow rate of uh, natural gas systems. Here we have some these already all these things have been obtained by fitting some experimental data, but this method is less accurate for two phase flow. For single phase flow it works well, but not for two phase flow. Now, these are the reference before um, we end I would like to show you some uh, of these um, uh, temperature measuring devices. First let us see how the one we are using this is the normal thermometer we use in our day to day life. So, we have the uh, bulb here, uh, here bulb and then we have the thermometric liquid which is changing its position as per the uh, temperature this, this is quite common. Okay. Now, let us come to the another one this is the this is what I shown is a thermocouple here we cannot see what is inside, but this is how we get it uh, from the market and this thermocouple is um, there inside this particular sheet and there are some cables you can see which are joined with this um, this read and these cables are used uh, for the uh, for connecting it to some uh, data logger. And lastly we have uh, this um, um, uh, PT 100 sensors the RTD that here we find that uh, um, in this RTD we have 
at the tip we have this uh, thin film if this thin film is the one in which we have this metal that uh, pt100 in this case the metal is there inside this particular protection this is a thin film rtd and here we find the wires which we are using along with this thing the lead wires which we use to connect it with some kind of data logger so that is how the whole system looks like with this we come to the end of the lectures thank you